In this video, I am going to talk about common architectural patterns used for microservice project. So let's begin. In any application development project, the project is mostly classified broadly into two types. The first is called greenfield, another is called brownfield. I hope that you have worked in any of the project but you may not be familiar with the term greenfield and brownfield. Let me explain. The term greenfield means any scratch project project starting from zero. So you have the opportunity to implement any design patterns, any architectural patterns that could be suited best to your business. In case of brownfield, we mean there is already existing project. Maybe it could be a monolithic project. Now this project is trying to migrate to microservice and if we remove the microservice context here, then this existing monolithic project is trying to move on to a higher technological version than the present one. So let's talk about with microservice context only here and we will look what are the common microservice architectural patterns that we used in a microservice project. So let's understand with a simple use case of breaking a monolithic to a microservice. Now suppose we have a monolithic project and in case of monolithic, all the business logic are as a part of monolithic and this monolithic have a single large database. So all the data of monolithic are going to be stored in this single large database. Also suppose let's say for example you are able to decompose the monolithic into three microservices let's say a1, a2 and a3. Now the question is how you decompose or how do you come to the conclusion that this monolithic project could be decomposed into only these three microservices a1, a2 and a3. To answer these questions, we have decomposition architectural patterns. So if we talk about decomposition architectural patterns, we could have decomposition on business capability, decomposition on basis of domain and subdomain. Now the first two, decomposition on business capability and on the basis of domain and subdomain is easy and preferable in case we are starting from zero that is we are starting in a scratch project so we can use either of them but in case we are trying to migrate with an already existing business and architecture and trying to migrate to a new service a new architecture completely we can use a strangler pattern now with this pattern we can either focus on a particular domain and then again we would have the monolithic part as well as the microservice developed part in the same URI space and slowly we can convert the whole monolithic to the microservice. The next important thing that going to be is the communication. So for communicating between A2, A3 and A1 we could have point to point communication as well. So this arrow depicts how the communication is going on. A1 is communicating with A2, A3 and A2 is communicating with A3. Now if we talk about point to point communication, if we add two more micro surveillance suppose we have A4 and A5 and all of them are communicating with each other. Think of the complexity it would bring with just five microservices and how it would be difficult to implement those. So for communication in case of microservice architecture, we would have a dynamic communication with the help of service discovery. 
again service discovery is broadly classified into two types first is client side service discovery and another is server side service discovery again how the registration of the services should be done in a service discovery is classified into two types first is self registration of services and another is third party registration but think of the concept of service discovery it may or may not suitable with your project architecture you can use a dynamic discovery or you can use a rest template or you can use a web client that is a reactive rest template once you done with the communication so in case here we have a1 a2 a3 so if we look uh, more broadly this a1 a2 a3 may be part of internal communication or you can say they are internal apis to any enterprise domain inside the enterprise firewall so what if if any external api will try to communicate with the microservice in order to implement that we would need external communication with the api through api gateways now api gateways is again uh, one of the more buzzing word nowadays and this api gateway we can implement through netflix zool or there are several api management tools present today like kong apg provide api gateway facility as well as api management facility so you can do routing authentication authorization but remember one point please do not put any business logic at the api gateway level because api gateway is generally placed at the tmc area that is the point connecting your internal systems to the external systems so if you're putting the business logic at the tmc area you are giving an open opportunity to exploit your code and use it in wrong manner also in order to protect our data our logic we would need to implement security so for security we could have an ldap or we can use ss token nowadays in microservice architecture everyone is going for ss token so it may depends upon again your business use case or the criticality of your information transmitting and stored so for ss token implementation you can use jwt token and auth2 as well but remember jwt is an implementation way auth2 is a protocol apart from these patterns communication security and external apis we could have data also data is the most important aspect for any business any project we cannot lose data so how would you decide that even a to a3 should have a dedicated database or even a to a3 have a shared database on the request processed by even a to a3 should be independent and data should be consistent in order to resolve all these aspect we have three or four most common data patterns that we used mostly in microservice architecture so talking about them the first one is database per service in case of database per service each microservice have a dedicated database by the term dedicated doesn't mean we would have a separate physical database it means we could have a private table to each microservice or we could have a private schema to each microservice and this table or schema could be dedicatedly used by this microservice only it may also happen that these microservices should share 
the same database. So we would have shared database pattern. For maintaining data consistency, we have Saga design pattern. And for implementing queries that involve data from multiple services, we have API composition and an alternative to API composition is CQRS, Command Query Responsibility Segregation. Apart from that, how the data of multiple microservices should join and a particular response is sent back as a whole, we can implement it through with the use of aggregator pattern. So if you're using database per service, then API composition CQRS, either of them you can use for query implementation, which involves data from multiple services. And for data consistency, you can use Saga design pattern and aggregator pattern. It also happened in case of microservice that at some point of time, due to any reasons, your microservice is down. So let's say A3 is down and your request requires A3. In order to provide reliability for microservices, we have circuit breaker pattern. So we can implement this circuit breaker pattern with the help of Netflix high strings. It also provides you a high strict dashboard or you can implement your custom circuit breaker. Apart from reliability, we can also have how the data is going through, how the user's event is captured, how you can monitor your applications, what are the metrics of your application, how the logs should be visualized. So all these aspects we group together into term observability. So for observability, we could have application matrix, we could have application monitoring, then log aggregation, distributed tracing. Apart from all these patterns that we look, external API security, communication, reliability, and observability, once you implemented your core logic, you need to deploy. In case of monolithic, we deploy to deployment folder of your servlet container. For example, in case of Tomcat, we deploy ER file or WAR file to web folder. But in case of microservice, we have mostly embedded server if we doing with Spring Boot in case of Java technology. So for deployment, we could have service per container and service on any deployment platform. Service per container means you are packaging your microservice as an image with the help of container technology like Docker and then deploying it on a server. It would be an AWS EC2, it could be Kubernetes, Service on deployment platform means any platform as a service, for example, Pivotal Cloud Foundry or a serverless deployment like AWS Lambda. So if you looked at what we had talked earlier about all the architectural patterns at one place, then the picture could be a quite complex one and it would look like this. So we would have decomposition, communication, reliability, security, external APIs, data, observability, deployment. So this was all about the common architectural patterns we used in microservice architecture. Subscribe, stay tuned and notified for more upcoming videos. You can also provide your valuable feedback by commenting.